Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2023, 2024, 2025 forecast event. We are bringing together astrology, wisdom transmissions, ecological perspectives, indigenous prophecies, the knowledge written and encoded in our sacred sites, and so much more to provide you with an in-depth understanding about what will occur during the massively crucial next three years and beyond. So listen in here to gain profound new understandings, learn what you can do to be ready on all levels, and expand your perception of what is possible as we move forward together with courage and resilience during these catalyzing times. I am Jocelyn Starfeather. I'll be your host and the creator of this event. And today I am thrilled to be here with Michael Parisi. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for being a part of the forecast event. Oh, it's so amazing to be here. I feel very honored to, to be a part of this event and this worldwide community. It's just such an incredible thing that you have coming together here. And the fact that, that this is such an amazing time on the planet and unprecedented time, and we're all in this together. So I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much, Michael. It's a pleasure to have you here. So I want to introduce you to everybody in case, in case anyone doesn't know you yet. So Michael Parisi lives a life of profound love for truth and is greatly invested in how we as humans can foster positive, lasting change individually and collectively. He is a frequency work facilitator, embodied awakening guide, and modern day mystic serving others to heal and awaken from the cause of suffering and confusion, the dream of separation from God, and bring to fruition their unique brilliance. Michael has helped people worldwide to be free and enlivened through life-changing individual sessions and monthly online group immersions. At a young age, Michael became deeply interested in spirituality, what is fundamentally true about human beings and life itself, and how we can realize this unifying truth and actualize a life of benefit and well-being for all. This sparked a journey of seeking and transformation with much trial and error as he tried everything that seemed like a means to his goal. Through this, Michael weeded out the effective from ineffective and has distilled strategies of healing, awakening, and optimizing human potential that are highly efficient and available to all beings within their own intimate experience. Michael also co-facilitates with his beloved wife, Sani Pakonen, who is also a speaker on this event, and they work with couples and groups to transform their lives and relationships and are currently facilitating a one-year program called Metamorphosis. It is Michael's mission to help people finally break free from the prison of inherited programming and false identities that keep them feeling lost, come to abide in the freedom of eternal presence, and actualize their brilliant potential and purpose as human beings. And I just want to say thank you, Michael, because I have been a student in your metamorphosis program with you and Sani, and it has been really, truly life-changing um, on so many levels. And also, I personally know your frequency work and your healing sessions are so powerful. So I just want to thank you for all this light that you are bringing to the world. It's really, really amazing. Uh, thank you, Jocelyn. Such a pleasure and honor. So your topic for today is the purifying presence of truth and the simple solution to optimize our future. And so to begin here, Michael, could you share with us what do you perceive is going on in our world today? We know there are so many changes and it feels so intense right now. So what do you believe is happening and what do you foresee for these coming years ahead? Yes. So I like to always bring things back to the origin or the foundation of where things really started from. So what was the initial fall that happened where that has led into today where there's so much uh, surface chaos and things happening and war and massive division and things happening and all this stuff purging out individually and collectively and so if we look at reality and what reality is in its essence we can say that basically reality is this field or like a three-dimensional screen of intelligence, energy, a, a God field or a source field that where consciousness is basically vibrating within itself to create varying degrees of density, time, space, and individual identities that uh, have become human beings. 
And so somehow consciousness got lost in its own experiment, its experience of being a human, of being an individual, and forgot that it was just pure consciousness, that pure truth, pure life. And so when that happened, this is what I like to call the, the original fall or the it's the uh, the eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is we that was when consciousness got lost in its own dualistic thinking of self and other of an individual separate from life separate from the source separate from intelligence separate from nature and so that that me the psychological separate self started to exist in a way that was all for me, 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 mine, 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 uh, I'm right, you're wrong. And so that's what's really happened is all distortions on this planet and all the war, all the problems arise out of this original problem, this original uh, distortion or the original seeming separation. Although there was never actually a separation, the one eternal reality is still the one eternal reality. It's just gotten lost in its experience through the mind, through identifying with a separate identity. And and so today we see that that has snowballed and it's just continued to build, continued to build. And there's so much unconsciousness. And that's, that's the dream, right? The dream of separation, the dream of unconsciousness, which has caused all these issues that we see. And now life is resurrecting itself. Truth is resurrecting. And this is why I named this the purifying presence of truth, because it's like truth itself is starting to, to re-emerge in the world because we've had all this distortion. And if you think of, say, if this was all this distortion, at the core, there's still the eternal truth. And that truth is now starting to emerge and break through and purge out all that distortion and the truth is emerging but we see the purge process right now that's happening so all the the wars and and the transparency it's a time of transparency where all that is hidden shall be revealed so all the untruth all the falsity all the distortion is being disclosed it's being um, it's, it's being brought up. The cool thing is, is that no energy is wasted so that distortion actually recycles back and returns to the source of its origin, which is truth, which is life itself, which is God or source. And when I say God, I don't mean a religious God or anything like that, but just the silent presence and intelligence within all things presence. And so that those distortions are going to be referred or fer- used as fertilizer to for truth to emerge in a whole new way. And so in terms of what's coming, what's to come and what's happening is there is still a, a, an upheaval process to come. There's still more purification. There's a lot of stuff happening. And these next few years, we're gonna to continue to see more and more stuff coming to the surface, more and more secrets revealed that, and, and certain powers that don't want these secrets to be revealed. And it's actually, the truth has already won because the truth is in charge. It's the, it's the authority, it is life itself. And it's decided, you could say, that it's time for the resurrection process. It's time for the new earth, the new world to emerge which all the prophecies has talked about at, of this time. And, and so the, the game has already been won, so to speak, and we're just seeing the byproducts of the, the purification. And so there will be more stuff coming up. And also the emergence of the truth is also emerging with new systems, new leadership, which is, which is incredible. You know, there's going to be, true leaders that that start to represent our planet and lead us as a whole that are actually resonating in the higher authority which is just truth and this authority isn't abusive it's inclusive 
So instead of an abusive authority figure that's based in me, 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 and separate from you, 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 and I'm just looking out for myself, it's actually birthed from truth, which is birthed also from love, because love and truth are, are inseparable. They're, they are absolutely inseparable. And, and so that love is starting to reemerge through, through the new leaders, and which are all inclusive. And there are specific individuals on this planet at this time that actually carry the blueprints for these positions. They have unique blueprints for these positions, some that are already adults, and then many of them that are children at this point in time, and children to be, that will really be uh, truly building the new society in a whole new way. But, but we are emerging into that. And it's all, it's all based in basically what, what are we and where are we resonating at right now? And this moment dictates the swiftness that this all happens because there has to be a certain critical mass of awakening or purification where truth is embodied in individuals. And then that takes, that takes the, the scales tip and the, the truth reigns, the resonance of truth, and then we can actually see the new system start to actually be able to be sustained. And this is also something that I'm really excited about is the, the new leadership because I, I also carry a blueprint to help, say, activate the, the new leaders and the new system. So I'm very excited for that, but it's, it's still to come because it's, it's becoming time. And the new systems, new education, new financial systems. I don't really know exactly what that'll look like, but there are many beings on these operations that carry these blueprints for the new, all the new systems, which is really one whole organism that includes finance, education, um, healthcare, all these things, food, agriculture. So yeah, it's very exciting times. It is very exciting times, that's for sure. Thank you for this. This is this is so powerful what you've shared. And I, one thing that I really want to emphasize that you said uh, a bit earlier there is that you know we've always the the truth has always been right here. Mm -hmm. It's just our perception of it has shifted or or you know slipped or dissipated, right? And it's just so interesting how this is written in the. Egyptian cosmology, you know, written on in so many ancient prophecies. And so the key now is to know that it's always been here. Mm. And, and we just need to remember, right? We just need to shift our perception. And we're already doing that. It's already happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really powerful and you know, just feels affirming to to state it. And it's like, I, I know as you often say, it's it's like it's so simple. <laughs> the truth is simple, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And, and it, it feels that way. It's like, wow, it just, it just makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. it just makes sense. We're shifting our perception and that we, it's, it's intense because we do have to change so much, mm -hmm. so much that we're letting go of and releasing at this time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So for the, you, you spoke about unconsciousness, you know, being one of the, our major issues here. So what is the solution to this, that, that we're really, this unconsciousness that we're facing as a species? And how do you see this from a frequency perspective? Mm. So if the, if the problem is the, the dream of unconsciousness and all the unconsciousness that's happened, then the solution is to wake up from the dream. And that really is what we all have to do and what's happening naturally. Again, like life is, is making the awakening happen, whether we like it or not. And some of us are very much allowing that and some of us are resisting it. And depending on how much we resist or allow dictates how much we suffer through it or go through, we have to go through really intense things, some of us, which is fine because it's still just a part of the process. But then you know, if we, if we really allow this to happen and, and surrender to the process, so to speak, then it's gonna be much easier. So really from a frequency perspective of the solution for what's happening is, well, first and foremost, just like you said, it's the, the truth is the solution. It is, is realizing the truth is the solution. And the truth is right here, right now. 
It's right here, right now. And I like to look at truth in a way of what, so what cannot be undermined or what is just a matter of fact of life? And we can look at a few things here. Of, well, there is life where all human beings can agree that we are alive. We have life. There's something that is powering us. Doesn't matter what we call it, but we can agree that there's some life here. And so we could say that that is a fundamental truth. And also that there we are conscious. We are aware. We're all aware. Every human being could say, I am, or I exist. And we, we all have thought. We're all thinking into creation. And also, the present moment is the reality of life, that I am always right here, right now, and life is only right here, right now. And so to, to come to truth, we have to realize truth and come to where truth is, which is here and now. And most of us uh, in humanity have left the present moment in the mind into the past, the remembered past or imagined future. And we live in that, in the mind. And we, we live according to all the frequency patterns. And I'll get into that, the patterns and programs that we've inherited through the family lineage. And basically since the original fall and consciousness, where we started taking on these false identities or these separate self identities, psychological separate self, and that we identify with that and that takes us out of the truth of who we are. Or it can actually take us out of the truth because the truth is, the truth is all that exists, but we can experience being out of the truth or we can experience being out of the present moment. So as we simply come back to the present moment, that's again, the simple solution, a simple solution is coming back to the present moment. And it's, we hear a lot of teachings on this, but it can be as simple as being present with something that's present in the space with you, like your body breathing. The body is always in the present moment. Anything we can see, taste, touch, feel, smell, hear, it's all in the present moment. Everything is always inviting us, come home, come home to here and now. And so we access the truth that we could say that present moment is the gateway to the truth. It's the gateway to realizing truth. And the deeper we actually fall into or deepen into the present moment, the, the mind actually starts to, to go quiet in silence even at some point. And we start to experience potentially the silent presence, the eternal timeless presence that all time and space is built on top of or is an expression or emanation of. And that's when we start to lose the sense of separation from life because there's no longer an identity outside of the life that is within us. And we touch that silent presence of life, which we could say is the silent presence of God or the silent presence of the source. And, and you just know it when you touch it. When you really drop into that, there is just an innate knowing of oneness, the true oneness, not oneness in, in a distorted or conceptual manner, but the original uh, truth of, of, our, of our inseparability with life. And from a frequency perspective, it's pretty, amazing how this reality works. So if we look at how reality is crafted, and if, we, if we're looking for how do we change reality, I, I think we have to look at how reality is created in the first place, if we're going to change it. And so again, reality is basically the source or life itself broadcasting through frequencies to then create varying degrees of density, like bodies, or trees, animals, and time and space and individual identities. And so what, um, what starts to, the, the, so the solution basically is that these frequencies, they fell when, when we fell out of the original wholeness, the original harmony and coherence into 
uh, basically being lost in a dream, the frequencies that make up our life got distorted because originally they were just perfect coherence and perfect harmony and all of life living in perfect harmony, just like nature. If we look into nature other than humans that are lost in the mind, we it's all working in perfect harmony and coherence. And say one tree is, is not doing well, the rest of the forest around it actually conspire to send what it needs to that tree because nature just innately operates from the natural state of wholeness and inclusiveness. It knows that the part is actually the whole. It's the whole in the part. And if the part is sick, then the whole is sick. If the part is sick, the whole is sick. And so what would happen if humans started operating again from this resonating order, which basically is, the, is our natural state. And when we come back to the present moment, we actually come back to that natural state of, of being and harmony and coherence where we start to include life. We include others in our lives. We include nature and not even as a concept, but it just becomes our state of being that suddenly our identity goes from being separate to being fully inclusive. And, and it's, so if we think of how reality is created or a human being is created through frequencies, so every curve of the hair, every, the color in the eye, everything is a multitude of frequencies that create that physical manifestation. And we all have a unique uh, or specific coordinate in time and space where, where the frequencies have to congeal around to then render a human body. Because if there wasn't a very precise coordinate, then it would be enmeshed with the rest of reality. And there wouldn't be this individuation happening. And so we can call that coordinate our zero point, which is really the present moment, that all nature agrees on this, basically this specific moment or a time stamp, the nature's clock, the universal clock that the entire universe and multiverse operates on to keep everything in harmony and to keep everything in its own coordinate. And so again, when we get out of that coordinate, we, we get out of harmony and it's almost like the antenna from the source. If this is like an antenna from the source, if we get off of that, then we're losing our life force. We're literally losing our life force. We're losing the, our, our resourcefulness, our health, well-being, and all these, all these beautiful things that are on offer when we're actually in alignment. And so we have to resonate because life is made of frequencies, we have to resonate the solution from the inside out. We have to embody the truth. And then as that resonates out, then the world changes because the world is nothing but consciousness and frequencies. And so the more of us that are resonating in the solution of truth through the gateway of the present moment, coming back home to the present moment, then the more, especially once we hit a critical mass of awakened beings or beings embodying truth, the, the, that, that shift will start happening. And then again, we'll see the actual new system starting to emerge onto the surface, free, or free energy technologies, new systems, all these amazing things that we know are, are, are already here. They're already in the works. And, and so, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that for right now. Is, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Again, really powerful. I'm curious. I have a, a you know, a little bit, um, a little, maybe a random question somewhat, but I'm just curious what you think about uh, course corrections. I, so for example, if somebody is, you know, off track or maybe not even so off track, but just needed to be brought back into purpose or back into that center point, right? Do you believe that, you know, a, a health crisis or a relationship crisis or whatever it might be in our lives is serving as a course correction to bring us back to that, that zero point? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And it, it all depends how we respond to it because that's our freedom is, is the freedom of choice and responsibility, the ability to respond in any given moment. So say if we do have a health crisis, it could be our, our spirit, which is like a, we could just say a higher dimensional formless aspect of the spectrum of ourself, our spirit, which is, is more omniscient than we are in, in the human form until we truly become more integrated, which is the whole process of embodiment. And it can utilize something like that or catalyze something like a health crisis or relationship stuff to shake up our reality and to break up the faulty foundation and, and break up any untruth. And, and so that's a lot of the crisis that, again, that we see is, is that truth just coming through and saying, hey, wake up, it's time to wake up. And, and you know, some people are going to sadly not wake up potentially not wake up and they're gonna either die off or something intense is going to happen which is you know, just kind of sad to think of it that way but but it's it's kind of a matter of, of what's uh, the course corrections that are happening and so it all depends on really us taking full responsibility for our life and our awakening and that is one of the keys to to this process is we have to take full responsibility, which is also synonymous with sovereignty, which is to become a sovereign expression, which we've been totally enmeshed with unconscious humanity. And that's what I meant before, the true oneness. We've become, we've separated from true oneness and become one with all the distortions and the human unconsciousness. So we have to actually separate, funny enough, and become an individual and sovereign again, so that we can realize the true, the true oneness with our, our with our source, and then reemerge into humanity to be in the world but not of it, and then we can actually come from an all-inclusive consciousness where we don't take on stuff anymore, but we simply resonate the solution into the world. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, and I think this is comforting too. I, I would imagine for a lot of people listening, you know, to know that these crises we're going through in our lives they have a purpose they have meaning Absolutely. they're guiding us back to center so just to really tune in and see what those what those messages are that are coming through for us absolutely absolutely yeah so what can we do as individuals because i feel ultimately this is leading us to our purpose right as we come closer and closer to truth we're going to come to our, our purpose our highest mm -hmm. contribution that we can offer so how can we be of the greatest benefit and, and really bring each of us our optimal future into being? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all a matter of releasing, which is the process that we're all going through. Again, the crisis, uh, that the life crisis that are happening and the, the collective crisis, all this stuff is, is, it's the release of all untruth. So to really, again, just, for us to individually take complete responsibility for our lives and for our awakening process. And then that means to also really investigate into our lives what is really true. What's, what is the fundamental truth of life and what is say not true in my life and allow those and just simply by presencing that becoming aware or shining the light of consciousness on the untruth, the light of consciousness actually starts to transmute it back into itself. And so that is an incredible healing process is just by simply being honest. And it's an amazing, amazing key to awakening is as we're, we become honest about who we've become in the dream of separation and unconsciousness that we're all a part of we're not alone. We all have the same patterns, the same insecurities, all these things, maybe in just slightly different flavors, but we're all going through the same stuff. And it's, it's really nobody's fault. Again, if we point a finger, finger, we have to point it all the way back to the origin of, of consciousness falling into a dream. So we have to be really honest about all these things, expose ourselves before the light of consciousness or the light of God, the light of the true source, uh, just being very honest. And, and as that happens, it starts to 
basically purify. Anything that's not of the truth will start to purify. And again, also, we, the greatest way or the greatest point or coordinate to start to release from is the present moment. So coming back home to presence over and over and over again, because we've been conditioned and trained to be everywhere else other than the present moment in the mind, you know, thinking about the future or re in recreating the past. And that's part of the frequency mechanics is we have all these patterns from the past and they basically just keep getting recycled. These frequency patterns recreate themselves and we're living, reenacting the past. And so as we come back to the present moment over and over again, just as simple as noticing the body breathing, noticing something in the space with you. Like I have a, a flower over here. I'm just with the flower. The flower is totally present. And I can just tune into it. We all know how to do this intuitively somewhere deep inside of us. And it's just inviting us to become present with it. Every tree, every leaf on the tree, just inviting us to come home to the present moment. And so it doesn't have to be a long meditation or anything like this, but in our day-to-day -day life, whether active or inactive, we can just be walking down the street, notice notice what our body's doing because that's actually in the moment and so we notice what's really happening right now what's really with me right now and that helps us come home to the truth of what is and so uh, repeated short moments of presence repeated many times will eventually lead us to abiding in the freedom of eternal presence the presence that we all truly are uh, at the deeper level, beyond our identities, beyond all patterns. So again, basically releasing all these untruths. And the truth is, just as you said before, the truth just is. It's not that we become the truth. The truth is already here. We simply unveil it through releasing what's not true or, say, recycling or, or purifying, transmuting, and then the truth just shines right through us and our unique brilliance, our unique purpose then emerges from that truth within us because we all have a unique blueprint on this planet and unique roles. And whether we're, just, we're a mother, we're a, a painter, a teacher, whatever role we might be, a new political leader, a new systems creator, we all have a uniqueness within us and we're all playing our part by simply being here and resonating as the truth. And then as we do that, again, our true purpose starts to emerge and we become the solution. We, we become a walking transmutation device as we embody the truth. We then resonate that truth into our environment and things just start to change. And so the the when we really think about what we're creating and this goes back again to the frequency perspective of when we're creating solutions what frequency is that solution being created from because we can do things on the surface level that are great you know like creating free energy technology or creating a new system or uh, building orphanages regenerative agriculture but again, the world is made of frequencies. So what is the frequency that it's being created from it is the frequency that it is imbued with, that it embodies, so to speak. And so if we, if we come from the frequency of, say, lack and distortion, then the solution is actually going to lack something and it's going to be distorted in some way. As good as it might be on the surface, it won't last. It will somehow crumble. But when we're in the truth, when we're embodying the presence of truth within ourselves through a process of being really honest, revealing untruth, and, and coming into the, the resonance of presence, true presence, then we're, say, sourcing from the eternal. And that means whatever we create is eternal. It's everlasting. It will sustain and the eternal is also all-inclusive. It's beneficial. It perpetuates life. We think of eternal life 
it's ever perpetuating. So it, whatever's created from that space or whatever we do in our lives, whether it's just in our relationships or our jobs, whatever it might be, will then actually be sourced from that eternal resource. And that's how we really change things. Yeah, beautiful. And can you share with us as well, how does your work support people in this whole process and support the world in this, in this process that we're moving through right now? Mm. Yes, so frequency work is something that I facilitate and it's very near and dear to my heart because it actually uh, was a huge, huge pivotal process for me when this came into my life through a couple mentors in the past. And actually, I had had some experiences back in 2012 where these abilities came online. And so with frequency work, what we're doing is basically in training to the origin of frequencies. We're in training to the source of life. We're in training to the truth. We're, we're resonating, coming to resonate with the truth on a, on a frequency level. And then as we do that, our, we can call it our self-healing abilities start to come online where the truth simply starts to emerge from our core of our being, that stable core. And that is the truth of who we are. And it starts to resonate throughout our system. And anything that is not resonating with the truth or anything that is discordant, of a discordant frequency, because of the original separation, it became discordant, it then comes back into harmony and coherence. And so our lives start to change pretty amazingly into more coherent lives and things that were, are just not good for us or healthy for us, patterns, habits, relationships, just start to naturally fall away without us even really trying to, because it's just not a frequency match anymore. There's no root in us of that frequency. So with frequency work, it's like basically a tuning fork. I, I simply become really present in that resonance and I'm not doing anything. I'm not placing anything inside of you or anything like that. I'm just resonating with a certain frequency or, or resonating with the truth. And then that expands and that same truth, the singular one eternal truth that is within you and all things and all beings starts to vibrate with it. And that in and of itself, again, starts to cleanse and clear and purify and our unique uh, genius, our unique brilliance starts to emerge from the core because that is our core blueprint, our core signature. And, and so on a practical level, this could look like, say, patterns in our relationships. Say we have certain patterns, which actually would underlie all areas of our life. So say we have a pattern from the family lineage of insecurity, which I think we could probably all relate to on some level that we, we've become insecure or we feel insecure, which again, when we look at it, it comes from the original split because originally we are totally stable. We are stable consciousness, stable, pure beingness that doesn't come and go. While everything else is coming and going, there's this stable presence about you. That's you, that's the essential you. And so when we come to realize that or resonate in that, that stability that's our core, then those patterns start to release. So again, say an insecure pattern is a resonating frequency in us. And then that broadcasts and creates our perception, the, the lens that we look through the world or the window we're seeing through a filter of insecurity. So we see things in an insecure way. We may feel insecure about ourselves, or we may feel insecure about lives, other, other lives, um, forms of life and not be trusting, things like this and see the, see the frailty in life. It also uh, creates our experience and our bodies, our actual manifest reality. Because again, our, the reality is manifesting from the inside out, so to speak. And that insecurity or lack would then uh, resonate again through perception, 
our experience, how we experience life, and then our manifest reality. So we would have dis-ease or lack health, or we would lack in relationships. We would lack in finances. We would lack in any area of life if that's resonating at our core. And so again, with frequency work, we're basically going beneath the root to the origin of frequencies to then resonate the solution and uh, the truth emerges. Your true self, your innate brilliance and magnificence starts to emerge. And so it's really the birth of uh, the true resurrection and birth of the brilliant potential and purpose of humanity within each and every one of us. Yeah, so powerful to to really imagine the the vastness of what's possible with this kind of work. I'm sure you have seen some incredible (laughs) examples of that. Um, So yeah, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing this with us today. And um, you have a wonderful free gift for those who might want to experience this a bit more. Um, You have a stabilizing in truth frequency meditation. So can you say a few words about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So the stabilizing in truth frequency meditation is exactly what it says. It's, it's a meditation, a frequency meditation, which is basically, you could say a supercharged meditation where it helps to not only am I helping to guide you to come to that eternal I am of you, that eternal presence, which is at the core of everything. It's the true awakened you, already awakened you. And uh, we can say that is the the truth of you and the truth of life, the simplicity of of beingness here and now. And so I'm helping to guide you into direct experience of that reality of you. And then also with the frequencies that are being generated, it also helps to resonate and to, again, to release and purify anything that that pulls you out of that center of presence. And so that's the the issues we have going on is all these patterns that seem to pull us out of our natural state of of being, our natural state of harmony and love and and, uh, inclusiveness and generosity and abundance. And so this stabilizing in truth is to really help us come home and to be stable in the truth because in the world right now, it's extremely important to be the eye of the storm, to be stable amidst the chaos. And that stability is our true nature. It's, it's what is about us. It is the truth of us. Again, while all experience comes and goes, all thoughts, feelings, crisis, patterns, circumstances, war, there's something about us that is just still stable, whole, complete. And this is what this meditation really helps with is to Give a direct experience so you can make it your own in your life. You don't, you don't have to keep, say, coming to me or something because I, I want people to become empowered and sovereign, but then to have the frequencies to really support that process even more and to release. And you can continue to do this meditation. You can play it at night while you're going to sleep, just real, very low volume. You can play it throughout the day or say you're, you're having a uh, interview or something like that you could you could actually play this in the background and it would really help you resonate without even having to hear it really because uh, the frequencies are there or better said it's it's not the frequencies necessarily broadcasting through it it's really cool how it works because it's being done from a timeless space and so it actually helps to bring you into that timeless reality of being and uh, so, yeah, that's that's the, the free gift. And I'm very excited for for people to experience those that resonate with what I'm sharing here and feel drawn to it. Yes, that sounds amazing. And so, everybody, you can go and claim that free gift by scrolling down just a little bit below this video and you'll find the link right there. And you'll also fi- find uh, Michael's bio and a link to his website there. So. Can you tell us also, uh, Michael, where can people find you online? And that link will be below for those who want to look, take a look. But, you know, what, what do we need to know about where to find you? And are there any announcements, anything you want to share about what you have coming up next? Oh, thank you for asking. So, yeah, the website is going to be the number one place. And I'm actually working on 
starting a YouTube channel and Instagram, which I will eventually be posting on my website. So the website would be the, the foundational place to go to. And I'll have, I'll be having writings that I'm putting up, which are, uh, you could say transmissions in themselves that they carry a certain resonance to them. And just by reading them, it will help you come, come home to presence, come home to truth. And also I have, I'm starting a new series called the Living Light series that will be a monthly, ongoing monthly frequency immersion for groups. And basically it's going to be helping us to really fully occupy, fully embody for the living light of our being, the living light of life itself, of truth, of God starting to fully wash through us and actually embody to, to occupy every cell of our being with the true light of who we are. And also that living light to, to, to basically broadcast through these sessions and to uproot again, any untruth. And that's the, uh, as I've been saying, the basis of all my work is to come home to truth and to embody the truth, which is also a process of purifying the untruth. And so that'll be ongoing. And it's, I've been really guided to make an ongoing thing where it's a consistent for people that feel called consistent month to month. Uh, it'll be three sessions a month. I'm pretty sure I'm just getting ready to launch it. Uh, three sessions a month, once a week for three weeks. And you can just continue to do it uh, month to month. And it'll be really supportive for the awakening process and the embodiment of your, your pure purpose and pure potential. And also I do individual sessions. So one-on-one -on -one sessions where we can be really say precise with, with your life. If you have any patterns or issues you have going on, you really want to see through, or you're just looking to supercharge your awakening process and illuminate your life even more. Or if you're say you are one of these beings who really feel you're here to uh, be a new earth architect, a new earth leader, I'm also going to be sharing more and more about that in the emerging future for those that uh, really feel they carry these blueprints. Ultimately, we all have an innate leader in us, but there are some who carry very specific blueprints uh, for, for the new, new systems and new earth. And I will be creating more programs as well. And you can just find all that information on my website. And if you sign up for the newsletter, which is where the free gift comes from, I'll have all my updated programs and anything uh, that uh, new offerings will be represented on that newsletter. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Sounds like lots of exciting things are in the works here. So that's, that's yes. what I'm here. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you again, Michael, for everything that you've shared here. It's been really powerful to just receive and just, you know, kind of dream into all of it. Um, so thank you for what you've shared and thank you for the work that you're doing. Oh, you're so welcome, Jocelyn. Thank you so much for having me here. It's truly, it's just such a blessing to, to share this with the world and, and for us to be together in this and to, to resonate in the, in the truth together. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure to have you here. And thank you, everybody who's watching. I hope that you have received so much from this interview and definitely go and claim Michael's free gift. You'll be so glad that you did. And I'm sending lots of love to all of you. And I will see you all in the next interview. Many blessings, everybody. See you again soon. Bye, everyone.